You're listening to Fucks Given, the one with Sophie from the Cock Destroyers. <laughs> it feels so good, right? Like off the tongue, like Cock Destroyers. Oh, uh, we have been waiting to get Sophie on for so long. I am so excited. So, I mean, we have to say ex Cock Destroyers, right? It's <gasps> over. The rain oh, is gone. Oh my god. And I don't quite know like what happened with that, so I'm so excited to get all the tea. Yeah, we are going to get the scoop. We're going to get knee deep in what went on. So please stay tuned for that. But first, a little update from both of us. What's been going yeah. on in your life at Florence? Yeah, I actually have a really exciting update for everyone. And I was so excited when this happened as well. Because I was just like, finally, oh my God. I got laid. Yay! Woo! The crowd goes wild! The crowd goes wild! I had sex for the first time since my breakup. Um, Last weekend. Last weekend. And it was a long time coming. Um, I think it had been over two months after the breakup since I had had sex. And that is quite a long time for me. Uh, yeah. Like, a re- actually a really long time for me. Um, mm-hmm. Because I'm, I've got a very high sexual libido. And yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, it, at the end of it, it was getting quite hard. I was looking for the, looking for the shags and nothing was really happening. And yeah, it was connecting. It was so unexpected as well. I think that's why it's quite like a fun story, just because I had absolutely no idea that that night was going to end in me getting laid. Um, Best kind of fuck. (laughs) The best kind. Mm -hmm. The best kind. Um, So yeah, uh, last weekend I ended up going to that house party that I told you all about that I was scared that my ex was going to be at. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I found out before I went that he wasn't going to be there. Um, and I, I'd, I had decided as well that I wasn't going to go if he was going to be there because I just know that would have turned out so badly because um, yeah. I am one of those girls who cries especially with alcohol too yeah i mean there's no, no shame in that whatsoever like it happens to all of us so like, we have all <sighs> I thought i was over this stage mm-hmm. like that that t- like type of wasted and crying i thought i was over that but at the grand old age of 30 yeah. i'm still crying when i get drunk it's like when you um, can't turn off the waterworks that's when you're just like for fu- yeah like, you're even crying you're just like can, can we just stop can now? we please stop yeah. this and and that it, it happened it happened on that night as well oh, i got fuck. to a point where i was just so wasted at this party and so I think something happened that just like made me feel really like lonely and like alone and I was just like for fuck's sake I can feel it brewing and then like obviously the tears just came up and I was like fuck I'm just sad because when you get that drunk your control has just completely left your body mm-hmm. it's like and your suddenly... body's expelling the alcohol through your eyeballs like you just exactly can't. you just can't and I literally had one of those moments where I like took myself out into the garden or my friend put me there I can't quite remember <laughs> um instead of dancing I mean crying in the middle of the dance floor um and I just remember sitting there and like not being able to stop the tears mm-hmm. and, like the tears just were like keep going and I was like I think I was even talking to people like having conversations but <laughs> just to calm down. it's like you know that really elegant when you're like I, when I cry I want to just be able to like look beautiful and just the tears fall and you know that's exactly. when it's like it's not even real crying it's just alcohol tears because you're just like <laughs> yeah. you can continue but the tears just keep flowing yeah I mean I'm very embarrassed like it was not the party that I wanted to have that oh, moment at because yeah. I was trying to impress a very cool crowd <laughs> yeah fuck <laughs> And so there was this really nice guy there um, who I know through friends and I actually asked him if I could talk about um, the time I got laid after the yes. breakup. <laughs> yes, this is so important. We need to normalise talking uh, about sex to other people and be like, are you cool with this? Right. Well, and he was okay. he was just like, of course, send me the link when it was out. And I was like, this is the best response so ever. I loved it so yes. much. I was like, this is so yes. cute. Um, such a turn on. <laughs> oh my God. So, I was wet for you. <laughs> so um yeah we were just like hanging out at the party and i definitely just thought it was super super friendly because um he like led me to the dance floor at one point and like we were having a really good like dance with each other but it was just like it was so like vibey and like when it's like a friend's friend like you just you don't really think like oh this is gonna go somewhere mm-hmm. you're just like this is a very friendly thing um and 
towards the end of the night when we were all like super drunk like it started getting cold outside and his he put his like arm around me and like I was like oh this is so nice like all the, like this cuddle is so nice and like he felt really nice to touch and like we had good like you know he smelled good so it wasn't like there was nothing off putting there um yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> but I still just thought it was like a Genu- genuinely thought it was just like a friendly thing. Yeah, um, you I couldn't no tell. Sexual vibes. No, I couldn't tell that he was into me. Um, but I think I, my radar is just so off mm-hmm. for figuring out if people are into me now. Like I'm, I'm just not. I'm. I don't get it. Out of touch. You're out of touch. It's so out, out of touch. <laughs> yeah. So I guess by the end of the night, I was just like, I'm really enjoying this like arm around me and these like little cuddles. This is really nice. Like he's such a nice person. And I was just like, everyone was going home and it was like 5 a.m. or something. And I was like, oh, do you want to come back to mine for cuddles? Because I just genuinely, that 100% was, that was all I thought that it was going to be. Yeah. And Um, it's also good you stated that as well. Like, you want to come back to mine, left open, and that could be misinterpreted if you were like, cuddles, straight up cuddles. (laughs) When she came home, I was just like, oh my god, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't realise that this was going to be, like, a sexy thing. Yeah. And, like, I wouldn't have brought him back if I thought it was going to be a sexy thing. But I was, like, so drunk and so excited in the moment. I was just like, I'm sorry, this is happening now. Yeah, this is like, gonna you're happen, just going like... to have to deal with it. <laughs> nice. um, and then, yeah, I went back in, set the mood lighting, got my, like, pink glow on in the room and, like, put some nice music on got sexy vibes going um Mm. and yeah it just turned out from like turned from making out into him going down on me and that was quite funny actually because I have quite high expectations for oral sex yeah and like because because I love it like I love people going down on me um and he started out quite like slow kind of like I guess like teasing me but at the at the beginning I was like hmm like (laughs) It's actually so bad. I'm like so judgmental when people do stuff to me. I'm like, where is this going? And then suddenly, like something clicked or whatever, like the teasing stopped and he was just like, I'm just gonna go fully in. And I was just like, oh my God, this is, and it was, it was <laughs> but Also my friend was here, so I was trying to be really quiet, but I'm not mm. sure if I really, um, I think I might have failed at that. But it was really, it was a shame because I love having like a loud orgasm and Mm. I really tried to have a quiet orgasm. But it also, it just like, it makes it like not as good being like quiet, but also kind of hot at the same time. Yeah, no, it's it's really weird. It's like, yeah, physically it might not feel as good, but like mentally, I think it's really hot trying to to stifle it. Yeah. It's a bit of a weird one. Yeah, and then I guess we swapped the oral, like I went down on him and... I do have to put my hands up here because in my drunken state, I don't think I communicated very well in that moment and I didn't really ask him like what he wanted or what he liked. Um, So I think I just like went down like, (laughs) like I'm just... I feel like in the like in my drunken state I was just trying like all my moves out, you know? Yeah. And like not really checking in and being like, does this feel good for you? Like, do you like this or whatever? And I felt really bad about that the next day because I was just like, fuck, like I might have just been like way too intense for him or like that must I don't know, I was just a bit like, you know, like anxiety the next day. Mm-hmm. Oh um, my god, yeah, the worst. Mm-hmm. But then I did I did check in about it with him because I was just like hey like I just you know I always want to like make a really safe space with sex and I feel like it's my responsibility to like communicate and stuff and he was just like it was absolutely fine like no no issues um nice but yeah and then then we had the penetration mm. um <laughs> it was good but I was so I was so drunk that like the whole thing was just so fun I was really enjoying myself but I think like by the end of it because we were just both so drunk and I was so tired it was like 7 a.m in the morning or something that I may have just been like at a point just like sort of flopped over and been like I'm going to sleep now (laughs) yeah 
Yeah. But um, it was a really great experience. And I was like, I was really scared actually that the first time that I hooked up with someone after the breakup that I was gonna feel really sad or mm. like have like loads of emotions come up or like just feel some type of way about it. But I think because that he was he's such a great person um, that it just made it feel so safe, so friendly, so fun. Um, and like the next day me, him and my friend all like chilled on the sofa and watched like New Girl together and I had like oh, my so head good. like snuggling into him and it was just really nice. Um, so yeah, I got laid. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> a really perfect like safe experience and that's what you need, especially mm-hmm. after everything that you've been through. Um, I think a lot yeah. of people hide away from sex, but sex doesn't have to be this like awful idea of mm. fucking someone and then a lot of confusion and a lot of hurt. It can just be really nice. You just have to make sure you're doing it with the right yeah. person. Somebody that isn't pushing constantly for sex and somebody who's like willing to take their time with you, which is perfect. This is my last recording in this room <gasps> in for a while. In the UK, oh my days. I'm going next week shit so excited for you baby it's gonna be great i've got a date lined up in canada already oh my god stop please (laughs) you're gonna have to voice note me everything or save it for the podcast yeah i changed my location on field so i've been checking out toronto and la (laughs) fuck really really exciting i'm yeah it's gonna be amazing yeah well we're super excited to hear from sophie so let's let's bring her on on. well it's gonna be grand oh my god (laughs) sophie Woo! yeah she has arrived oh my god four guys and girlies my non-binary oh my god you have the best energy ever the best You've come on looking like a golden ray of sunshine with such literally beautiful purple tits right now in your purple top. Oh, oh, oh bloody hell, Sophie! You could knock someone out with those, seriously. Uh, <laughs> are for those boulders there. <laughs> How are you, my lovely? How's your day been so far? Oh my God, you know what, babe? You know it's so funny. I am so like all over the place, right? Because. I cannot say no to like op- opportunity mm-hmm. and I'm like right how can I fit this into my day and um yeah I'm always like right I'm here from here to the next and then of course I'm so sorry that I forgot my <laughs> mic but I'm so happy that this worked I was like thank goodness yes. <laughs> well we're just so grateful to have you here because we know you are such a busy babe um yes. and we've been meaning to talk to you for a while of course we've we've just been following everything that you do and we love everything about you so thanks again for coming on oh my god no thank you for having me this is so for our curious fuckers who do not know you would you be able to introduce yourself to them Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, hey, my wonderful guys and girlies and my non-binary friends. I am the Sunday, Sunday queen. Fuck. It's a Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) My little viral video. And of course, it all started from the cock destroyer. (laughs) Myself and Rebecca Moore. Oh yeah, babes. Get back on it. (laughs) <laughs> um, so it all started from the viral video with me and Rebecca getting six more dicks for a gangbang and then the cock destroyers kind of like I mean it was the LGBTIQ community mm-hmm. they, it just exploded and we were going from place to place as the cock destroyers and it was absolutely awesome so do you know what I think I would describe myself as a real sex positive beacon um and you know what and it's so funny because that's what um myself and damien were talking about today is about being like sex positive Mm -hmm. and and of course with me and rebecca it all started from the cock destroyers and how bloody awesome is that like you know that time ago in october when we did that viral video it's like Yes, and of course the anniversary is coming Ooh. up. So, Ooh. did you ever expect that viral video to catapult you into this fame? Fuck me. <laughs> no, honestly, it is. Do you know what? And I, I will say this: that I'd be nothing without all the support. Mm-hmm. 
and and that is so true without the without the community behind me without all the love I, I wouldn't be here so what actually was the cock destroyers and how did you and rebecca work together do you know what it was for me it was a sex positive movement mm. two it was two women loving dick going out to get that dick you know no fucking shame and that is the most powerful message ever yeah. the cock destroyers movement is it was it meant the world to me <coughs> so what, and what sort of content really, did you do together so oh fucking everything babe <laughs> you know <laughs> So we did like, first of all, it's like the gang bangs, and then we did like cock destroyers kind of skits, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and it was then um, kind of slags of Suffolk on YouTube, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's great. It was, do you know what? It's really great, and um, and like Rebecca's gone on to do obviously her own things as well, and it's all still part of the cock destroyers. Mm -hmm. It really is, but. You know, we've just gone on different paths, but we're still those fucking cult destroyers. Yeah. And um, and it's absolutely great. And now I've started the Sinners up with Damien <coughs> and we've got our own clothing range. And, and yeah, and I'm still going out and getting that dick, babe. Getting that <laughs> fun dick. It's bloody brilliant. <laughs> That's very empowering because I feel like a lot of people think that women who won't cock that much, there's something wrong with them. You know, like there's they're, they're just doing it for attention, which is just, again, such a negative stereotype. Like, it's okay if you just want your whole life to be around cock. Like, yeah. even yeah. if, um, I, I can't remember if you said that you were bisexual or pansexual, but even as um, me being pansexual, just wanting cock so much and then feeling like, oh my God, I'm letting my team down because I just really want fucking cock. Like, I don't know if you ever feel like that with the imposter syndrome. It's like, I can't be pansexual if I just love cock so much, but it's like, of course you fucking can. You can love it all. Can. Yeah, yeah, I'm pansexual myself and, and it's great. Do you know what? I just love fucking everyone how did oh. um how did the ending of the cock destroyers affect you i guess like you must have this oh. must have been quite a traumatic time oh my god yeah and and, and you know what as well there are on totally honest mm -hmm. and, and, and totally honest, there's no no hate towards rebecca or, or anything like that there really really isn't i um i felt and I know a lot was blamed on Damien. Oh, <laughs> and I read uh... the article and it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but you know what is, I felt that I needed to go out on my own. Mm -hmm. And I felt, because Rebecca is a wonderful, powerful businesswoman. Mm -hmm. She really is. And and on, honestly, is there was, it was just times that I felt that I couldn't really be myself. Like, oh, it was the reputation of the cock destroyers. It might mm -hmm. get affected and you've got to take that down. And and um, then I met Damien. He said, you just got to be who you want to be. Yeah. He said, you do what you want to do. And I was like, right, okay, I think this might be a new journey for me then. And and I know Rebecca wanted, really wanted to do her own project. She went on to do her escorts and she's done her YouTube. And But honestly... um. We've gone on two different journeys now. The cock destroyers will never end. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we're all fucking cock destroyers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for, never end. For, and oh, do you know what? That door is always open. Yeah. yeah. That door in Rebecca is always open. I, I still love her. But do you know what? I just felt myself at the time i felt i needed to go on and do something for me and and that that's the truth and um and yeah and i met damien and um yeah think things did change um but you know what i'm still me i'm still yeah. doing what i do best fuck me <laughs> oh my god florence i have just had an amazing wank to the kinky section in cheeks <laughs> oh my god i'm so jealous i'm gonna go and do that but after we finish recording oh baby i um i absolutely i love it so much when kink is included in the categories on 
on like ethical porn sites because I feel oh, like it's yeah. kind of left out. These guys have like, I feel like they're in my mind. They've got like a guy on guy section, a rough section, a kinky section. I'm like, well, I'm fucking done. The curious fuck is like, what the fuck are you talking about? I need to be in. I need to be, I need to know what this juicy, juicy website is. And this is our new sponsor, Cheeks, well, hey. which Cheeks. is a community for sexual inspiration, education, and all things intimacy. So they've got porn, sexy audio stories, tutorials, and more. Their website is actually so delicious as well. I love so the branding. We, I mean, we're such suckers for branding, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> we really are. Uh, just like, and porn, want, to be I, fair. I want my porn page not to look like some like dirty back alley kind of site where I feel wrong. I want it. To, I want them to be proud for it. And Cheeks literally do have that. The styling is just nice. Yeah. They're really revolutionizing the porn and ethical porn scene. And you know how much we love ethical porn. And it's really fucking tasty when porn also includes sex education. Yeah, they do live tutorials. How cool is that? So fucking cool. It's part of a community that I want to be a part of anyway. Well, we are a part of it now, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. And you curious fuckers can be part of the community too. Use our promo code COMECURIOUS to get a 14-day free trial when it comes to choosing Cheeks' yearly subscription. That's two weeks of free wanking. Whoa. Love it. Go check out Cheeks at getcheeks.com. So that is spelled C-H-E-E-X. Cheeks, baby. Just like how mine clap when I masturbate. (laughs) (laughs) Happy wanking, everyone. (laughs) Enjoy. At the moment, since the cock destroyers, are you in a kind of like porn couple with your partner? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And we go and we go and see everyone. Like, um, you know, we've got it isn't like so people think that I'm not allowed to do stuff, and and that's not the case at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in fact, yeah. I'm the one booking everyone in. <laughs> so, um, but we love we, you know, we see we want to see, and I love it. I fuck men. I fuck trans women. I fuck trans men. I fuck girl. You know, and so does he. And and do you know what? It's fucking great. Mm-hmm. I find someone in se- who appreciates me and lets me do a sack. I'm sexually liberated. And yeah. no yeah. one is going to ever take that away from me. But we've been so proud of you. Like the fact that you were a pretty much an overnight sensation where you got picked up by the LGBTQ AI. Like you've been so, on RuPaul as like the Frock Destroyers. The, yeah. you've, just, you've just been, ex- you've exploded. Like I, I can't remember a time I didn't look at my phone where you didn't come up as a meme, where you were just there, oh, just no. like, oh my, it was just so beautiful to see. Yeah, and you, and you know what, throughout babe as well, is it's like I said, I'm just being mm-hmm. me. And, and you know, there, but there's a lot of hate. There is yeah. a lot of hate, yeah, there's but... a lot of people with kind of the stuff I do or because I'm quite out there but do you know what I turned 30 and I got onto Twitter and but I will say before that I will say that I was meant to feel very ashamed for what I did for a living you know I was it in porn then I was in the sex industry I've been um you know an escort or, or prostitute or whatever you want to call me um since I was 16 and I am not ashamed of Good. that now in fact I celebrate myself going do you know what I am a powerful money woman making money through sex yeah. yes. doing what you and, like and, doing what you enjoy and making that your career yeah, exactly. And do you know what? It's it's not the easiest choice of career. God, You've no. got to be mentally strong. There's things that you're going to go through that aren't so great. And you've got to be strong, whether it's, you know, clients not paying you or you get mugged or you get beaten up. You know, I've been through all those type of things. But it's definitely a career that you've got to be mentally, mentally strong in. Because um, at the start, I was very naive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought everybody was like really nice and you know (laughs) yeah there's something very strong to say about having you know like optimism and positivity radiating because even if you come across absolute dickheads and cunts like like we all do still if you try and see the best of the situation you can't really go wrong 
That is so true. That is so, and, and do you know what? Recently, so so it is funny. I've like had so basically I'm shadow banned on Twitter. I've had my Instagram taken wow. away like four times. Uh, and now I've had my only <gasps> Do I what? But, but, what the hell? Yes, I'm literally not making any money at oh, the minute. Shit. But I but you know what you take from this is the fact that one, it isn't all about mm. money. Yeah, it's fucking difficult. And I've had to go, right, these are the bills I'm gonna pay mm. for the minute. And those are the ones that could just wait. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's the kind of the way it is at the moment. But from a lighter point of view is the fact that you've got to carry on and you know i could either i will be honest last week i had a week of real kind of like mm -hmm. low like real depression um you know there was the chance that i would you know i really fancy because i had a, a cocaine addiction before i was thinking oh, snap. i could <laughs> just numb i could numb myself mm -hmm. that might be a good thing just to try and get through mm -hmm. this but no i i have the feelings i i then i didn't go on antidepressants either not that that's a bad thing because i have been on them before but they just didn't work for me um but i could numb it with coke and i just <laughs> no so i went those feelings last week are feeling totally fucking shit um <laughs> um but this week i was like right the only way is from rock bottom is to bloody get up there now stand up and and get the website so i've just set up um a little website from and um, using um model centro mm. so you've got fan centro mm -hmm. which is kind of the fan base and then you use model centro as kind of just setting up your own website yeah. and on that reading into it i could put anything on there so because only fans has really banned you from doing any public that includes on your live shows um water sports you know hard sports vomit and that's all the things that i kind of do it's what i really <laughs> enjoy yeah. Um, you know, get a, get a bit of vomit. Oh, in there, always <laughs> tasty. Wait, so Not OnlyFans doesn't like any of that stuff? Wow. Oh no, man, there's so <laughs> you can't even write torture down. Like, there's there's so many things that are banned on there. Even if it's right. like orgasm torture, and I'm like torture Actually, yeah. yourself. You know, there's, to be there's fair, so there's so many, many words. There's so many words that are off limits. I can't mm. even write when I want to put like something about lactation. I'm like, I can't even ever. I can't even write that word. Yeah, it's really random as well. Yeah. It's like or what golden. Why? Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling feeling golden um and then it's like no 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 that's golden shower that's not okay and i'm like oh for fuck's so sake interesting yeah. well it's good I'm, that you found another platform to do that we know we're dirty yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if i do have a fucking golden shower like really is piss that bad what if i want to piss on someone yeah. fuck's sake yeah. kink shaming yeah, yeah. Kink they're shaming. kink shaming mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> not cool if they got their minds open and they're wanting yeah, it, then... exactly. <laughs> Sophie, how did how did you get into porn? Kind of like what? Why did you get into it? And what inspired you? Like why do you love doing it? Oh, what great question! So, so basically, I turned just was coming up to thirty, and I thought. Do you know what? I need a change of career. So I sat down. My my, my son at the time was so that was three years ago. He's fourteen minus three, so he was twelve. Mm -hmm. And I thought, right, I've been in the sex industry, sh like shying myself away because I didn't. I loved what I did, but I needed a change. Mm -hmm. So I sat son down. I, I was with my family, my dad at the same time. And I said look, I really need to do this for myself. I want to be out there. I know I'm good enough to be on film and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this for me. And do you know what? I haven't looked back. It's been yes. absolutely awesome. Gangbangs are definitely my thing. I absolutely love them. <laughs> um, just getting totally covered, you know? You know, a nice bit of covering base. So good a as well. You need your niche as well. Like, I think a lot of porn porn like performers and porn stars they they like porn but a lot of them go like oh i don't really want to do the extreme stuff but if you do enjoy the extreme stuff like there's nothing better than doing what you do as a job but loving it yourself of course like it's just like any other day sometimes you're not going to love your job and other days you're going to feel so empowered but fuck me if you're doing like the craziest shit out there it's only society that tells you it's wrong if it's who you are then that's just more valuable than anything you can have 
oh my god so so true and do you know what some it, the funny thing is i i i'm very very insecure in myself so i'm, I'm very i feel you know sometimes i feel i just can you know i don't feel good enough yeah. and all those is and i've had that got since i was really young mm. when my mum left mm-hmm. and um, and and the thing is, what porn's done for me is actually given me confidence. Yes. It's like, right, so yeah, so fizz on. And that's what I say to you. I see this like little force field, blue force field around me, and that's the safe. And I'm like, boom, here's Sophie in the gangbang, taking all this, you know, you know. So great having two sides to me we have the softer safe and i do i love and i really care about people and as soon as safe's on film boom when people think of porn uh like this as well i think there's also like the question that comes up is like are the people involved in this porn are they there for the like do they want to be there do they want to be part of the gangbangs is it ethical so like what are your opinions on ethical porn um do you know what i Oh, yeah, that you, as long as it's consensual. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? As long I always feel, as long as I'm there, I've been told what I'm going to do. I've been told who's who's going to be involved. I I know what's going to happen. Then no problem at all. Um, you know, everybody wants to be involved or wants to watch a certain porn now as long as it's not hurting anyone and they are there and you know uh, they're they're getting paid fairly as well Mm -hmm. yes yes that is exactly it i've even actually how funny you say that there's a couple of girls who have just come in, into the industry and you know they feel that they've got to have their prices really low mm-hmm. yeah. really low. tell you what yeah you set your price and you keep to it you keep to it i'm not gonna i'm not do you know what i'm not gonna do double anal for 300 quid no, you sod off. This this is my body and I, I'm going to keep it how I want. At the end of the day, I don't need them. They need yeah. me. These companies need me. We're trying to work as a team, you know, especially like when I've been on set. I'm not just going to let the guy have a floppy, you know, <laughs> struggling it or struggling to come at the end. We're there as a team, like whether I'm massaging his fucking feet or giving him a suck to, to let my right, base is going to make this come. But um, it can be like, you know, eight to ten hours yeah. on a fucking scene. And and the thing is, is that models should, yeah, should get fucking paid. We're, we're there. We're working hard. Our bodies are tired. Sometimes, like when I've done a double, like when I've done a double anal scene, I need a week to recover. Yeah. You know? So especially if I've done a double anal, DP next day, double anal, DP. <sighs> and then i need time to recover so you need that money for the time to recover i mean the sex industry will have also given you the power to be your own businesswoman and to do the things that you want to do not just the confidence side of things because it is fucking hard like being your own businesswoman being your own business person but also in an industry that is mainly run by men where you don't really have much of a leg to stand on when it comes to if, if there are issues especially like when you're dealing with mental health which most people do regardless regardless of what industry they're in. And thank you so much for being so honest about that because it's hard as well because we have stereotypes revolving around the sex sex industry, sex workers that they're they're only doing it for mental health issues. And that's just not fucking true. Is that an evil stereotype that gets paired together to try and justify why people might be doing it? It's like, well, no, mental health just happens anyway. Poor mental health, let alone like, People are allowed to just want to get in the middle of a fucking gangbang and get come everywhere, regardless of whether their mental health is. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I want to be fucking wallpaper pasted today. <laughs> yeah, I love do it. You, do you have like a favourite scene that you've done? Um... Oh, it's, I mean, it's definitely the gangbangs. Do you know what? I really enjoy... So although I'm a switch, mm-hmm. I was I mostly enjoy being, being a sub. Yeah. And it just getting fucking ruined. Just ruin me. Like, I fucking <sighs> love. Like, and it's so it's, it's absolutely great. Yeah, I absolutely... But anything that's kind of a bit taboo yes. as well, um, I absolutely love. So, yeah, I... I for me, I do enjoy scat. I do enjoy vomiting. Yes. I do enjoy 
or a sport. You know, I, I enjoy it. Like, I, we, me and Damien did a scene and we and I was puking all over his coat with banana. Oh, my God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so empowering to hear. So many people shy away from, like, the hard sports, the vomit, the piss. And it's like, that's just kink shaming. Like, it is another part of sex that we should be fucking proud of and enjoy and just be like, okay, that might not be for me, but you fucking go for it. You enjoy yourself, especially if that's your niche. I mean, not many people do that. Like, it's just if if do whatever makes you happy and if that's vomiting all over cocks and like fucking snorting lines <laughs> of shit do it <laughs> snorting lines of shit oh my god <laughs> Nice. This actually it. leads on really well to one like this new segment that we've we're reintroducing into the podcast, which is called your fuck off story, and it's a story that's like your wildest sex story. You it's like your party party like pleaser story where it's just like yeah, what was that really really like fuck off moment? Oh, do you know what when? <laughs> Brilliant. So I I like I um I went round this guy's house right. And I basically had a real fetish for like bugs. And this oh. is one of my favorite stories. Like, so basically, I go in there and there's a real smell of poo. <gasps> and I'm like, right, okay. So this is quite a turn on anyway. So I go in through the door. Anyway, he's got all these bugs everywhere in all these containers. He said, What I want you to do, he said, I'm going to lie in this kind of like sleeping bag, pour them all in. And he said, Go upstairs. So I go upstairs, there's this bucket that he saved as shit oh. over about the last month. Stinks. Go downstairs. Anyway, he said, right, what I want you to do is pour it all on yourself and oh. then put the bugs in there and we have to zip ourselves in. So fuck it. So I get in there, all the bugs are fucking going around. I've got all this shit all over me. We fuck, he comes. And he's like, oh my God. What have I just done? Of course, I'm still there fucking horny as fuck. I'm like, this is like my fetish. got bugs fucking falling in my hair. Shit's all over me. I'm fucking still playing there. And he's like, get out. Oh, I've just come. I've just come. I said, I haven't finished yet. He said, I've just come. I've got bugs all over me. I need to go and wash this shit off. Oh. And that realisation when he just come, I was like, what the fuck are you on about? So he went upstairs. I'm there playing with my fucking vibrator. And I'm like... Fuck off! Yes! <laughs> fucking hell! So I come and then I was like, fuck it, I'm fucking off now. <laughs> That is in fucking incredible. Oh, You've just sorry. mixed two huge, like very niche fetishes there. <laughs> oh my it. god! I know that feeling that the guy had though. You know, like when you have a fetish and you you just you you it you might even hate it, absolutely hate it, but that's the thing that turns you on the most. And so you as soon it. as you come, you're just like, I need to get out of this right now. Oh, like this god. done. As soon as I orgasmed, I was like, actually, I'm covered in shit. <laughs> We we just had an episode that was like everyone's like the curious fuckers fuck off story and I think I don't think anyone's ever uh -uh. going to be able to top that You've story. Topped that. that is like the winner. Bugs, human shit oh in a sleeping bag. Of all time. Fuck. Oh wow. God. Is he a regular client? Do you get to see him again and play again? No, do you know what? I think he was so traumatized he never told me that. Oh shit! She never wants to be up again. You know? Oh, but that's, that's so because he's so like you know he's so ashamed of that yeah. kink that he was just like I need. He obviously had this idea in his head and he'd been prepping for this for yeah. so long. Crazy. He had this idea and he was just like this needs oh. to happen. So he organized it and then once it happened, he was like, okay, I've done it now. Yeah, <laughs> never again. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. It's like he knocked my fucking number, so... Oh, shit. <laughs> fucking hell. I feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, with extreme stuff like that, you watch it in porn and you love it in porn and you just don't know how it's going to relate in reality. Because a lot of people, they, you know, they, they think that the porn that you watch and the fantasies you have in your mind is the exact same as the reality. And then when it actually happens, they're like, oh, it's either very different or, again, traumatic. <laughs> Fuck! Oh, oh this my poor God. guy. I hope, I hope he wasn't traumatized. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> and you were just hell. there. Fucking love this. Yeah. Oh my God. It's this one for the <laughs> fuck off wank bank. <laughs> Sophie, what is what is your biggest kink or fetish? Oh, so it's it's definitely um actually being pooed on. Amazing. Oh. <gasps> 
love it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, Damien did it to me the other day and we filmed it and that. And I'm like, babe, because I love him being dominant, like holding my neck while he's shitting all day. Oh, like, my God. That's love. so incredible. Like, I am so proud of you for just being so honest and open about that as well, because oh. it's so hard to talk about. It is. Yeah. Do you know what? I like being shit on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone can you know. Oh, um, I don't think you should be saying that at the dinner table. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Oh, my God. Are I heard... like, um, are you okay? Are you okay, hun? Like, what? <laughs> Freaking out. It's just like, fuck me. But, like, that's just it. What turns you on is something that you can't necessarily control, especially if it's a fetish. It is something that is, like, hard-coded within you. You can't get rid of it. You can't escape it. It will always be there. You may as well fucking own it. Fuck it, isn't it, babe? Fuck it. Fuck it. I, I heard a story. I heard a story once of um, a couple who froze their shits and then used their frozen shits as dildos. Yeah, oh, fuck. God. Uh, yeah you have to be so careful though right like frozen even if it's in a condom imagine that like you know when it's semi thaws and you've got that up stuck like inside you and then you get like the the freezer burn on your pussy like no that's too dangerous man freezer burn i love it i'm not i'm not gonna lie this does freak me out This is too far. This is too far for me. These these kinks and fetishes are way more common than people realise. And I think it's one of those things that people get turned on by something that they are really disgusted about. Yeah, I think. Yeah, or it's like, time, it's so yeah. disgusting. You're mm-hmm. like, fuck. And I feel like that's where a lot of kinks and fetishes really come from. Yeah. But it's, it's, I think people always get very shocked in terms of water sports and hard sports because they're just like, I don't understand like how someone could like that or like why would that be sexual in any kind of way? Which is yeah. such a shame because like with my with my fetish, I feel like it's a bit of like a people accept it more like because I have a fetish for tickling, but it's still the same thought process, mm. you know. But like people see it as like, oh, that's really cute and innocent, um, but it's the same thought process. Sophie and I have the same thought process about our fetish like it's the exact same like the shit that happened to us when we were younger how we felt about it growing up how we feel about it now it's the exact same it's just they're two different acts and two different things and yet i'm treated like oh that's really cute and sweet but then as soon as it's something else it's same with like feet for example people are like oh feet that's that's, like so gross and it's like well or it could just be oh i'm I'm the same i love feet like all over it please Oh, oh my god Oh my god, I lick Damien's all the time. Like, please let me massage your feet. (laughs) (laughs) People never believe that you can have orgasms from like other parts of your body, but people talk about footgasms all the time. All the fucking time. I mean, I can have tickle gasms. I literally can come from tickling. Just like fuck, it's insane. Uh, I just love it. I love. I love. I love. I, I think it's so fascinating, and this is why we do need to talk about fetish more because there are so many people out there that have a fetish that won't even talk to their partners about it, haven't even verbalised it. I get so many people on Instagram being like, "I've never told anyone that I'm into this," and like, "I don't know how to." And again, it's because of that built-up shame from when you're a kid, from when you have that experience, from those yeah. like really confusing feelings of like, "I shouldn't be into this, but I am." Uh, and then figuring it out when you're old and being like, yeah, how how do I talk to people about this? And really, it's just something you should be like, well, that turns me on. And that's yeah. just the way it is. No shame. No, no shame. shame. Yeah. <laughs> I love. I absolutely love. Well, Sophie, thank, thank, you, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's and wonderful. in terms of what you were just talking about, where where can people find you on your social media? So, um, although I'm fucking shadow banned, um. <laughs> Sophie Aisla on Twitter, um, Sophie A Superstar on Instagram, and Sophie Anderson XXX.com, and Damien's is Damien Oliver XXX.com, um, and Damien Oliver XXX on Twitter. And of course, we got our fuck it line. Fuck yeah. it! Yeah. <laughs> of course if anyone is listening to this podcast and wants to see the fuck it line just go to sophie's website or check the whole video out on youtube but sophie it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you you're absolutely amazing you are incredible thank you you for being so honest 
Um, yeah, thank you for being so honest as well, because it's so hard. Some of the topics you've talked about, like mental health, like drug addiction, like dealing with the sex industry in the way that you have is, is hard to talk <laughs> about, but so needs hearing. So thank you so much. We can't thank can't you. thank you enough. Thank you. Love you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you get loads of cock. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Holy shit. <laughs> I feel like I've met my like my spirit, like the person that is just inside my head that I've still been reserved to be like. <laughs> I am still shook from the shit bug story. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm fascinated. I'm like kind of into it as well that she's so into it. I, it yeah. just, why is that such a turn on? I fucking love her. Her energy was like, so like, wow. I love like, what a, what an episode. What yeah. an episode, Curious Fuckers. Goes down in Curious Fucker history. This, this one does, yeah. for sure. And if you don't, if you don't know the cock destroyers, then go and look up all the memes right now. Yeah, immediately search them up, see what it's about, see all the original videos because they are incredible. And also, yeah, massive shout out to Rebecca as well, who is the other half of the cock destroyer. We had an yes. episode on of her um, probably like last year. So if you just search Rebecca Moore, way like two years ago, yeah, really. Two, I'm oh, sure. is it? Two, oh, of course, because yeah. fucking COVID just like took a chunk out of our lives. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go and check out that episode because she was incredible. Um, yes, and definitely. of course, check out Sophie and all of her content and support her if you love what she's about because that's yeah. just the best thing you can do. Also, also if you have your fuck off story, if if you think you could match, can you beat it? Can you beat Sophie's fuck off story? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe if you think you might come close please email it in at fksgiven at comecurious.co.uk. Oh, please. I love, I need to hear more of these stories. Fucking love the fuck off stories. And of course, if you want to follow us, we are on as Come Curious on all social media, including Instagram. And you can watch this whole episode on YouTube or listen to it on your podcast what? platforms. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah and make sure that you leave a rating and a review because this gets us seen and heard by so many more people and you know the message that we are wanting to promote is a good one so yeah, share, imagine it, share though, it like we're on like the front page for apple Podcasts talking about shit and bug fetishes get it. oh imagine get it there Changing curious the fuckers you could be like we you could get us there yeah part of history Part of be sex, part of scatty fucking history. <laughs> history, mate. I Get love... us to the Apple homepage, number one in the charts. Oh, please, all Beat right. All those other podcasts that talk about sex. We're better. We're better. We're like we're like the filthier version, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we go the whole way. So, curious fuckers, we will see you next Thursday. I mm, love you all so much. Enjoy your poos. <laughs> You know what I mean. Wink. Enjoy your poop. Wink. Ah, you winked as well. That means you're into it. Ah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs>